Sup, and welcome to A Random Review, the series in which I review things when I feel like it. And after watching and reviewing Dune, which I did in the previous review, I was on a bit of a Dune kick, and I found myself watching a lot of behind-the-scenes videos about not just the 2021 version of Dune, but the 1984 version as well. And by coincidence, while I was doing that, I caught an ad for Jodorowsky's Dune, which is a documentary about a film adaptation of Dune by famous Chilean director Alejandro Jodorowsky that was never actually made and that has often been described as the greatest unrealized movie of all time. And so, I figured this was as good a time as any to finally watch that documentary, which was released in 2013 and was directed by Frank Pavich. And I did, and I will now review it, obviously. So, coming into this documentary, I had no conception of Alejandro Jodorowsky. I had never seen any of his movies. And they show some clips from the movies that he had made in the 1960s and 70s prior to Dune. And I gotta tell ya, I'm okay with not having seen his classic movies because holy crap do they look insane. Like, there's some nudity and violence that they show in those clips that are wild. And I looked up what one of his most famous movies, El Topo, was about, and it's something that I would never go out of my way to watch in a million years. And that's not me writing off his movies, by the way, which I can't do and won't do. If anyone wants to insist that they were brilliant or amazing, I'll let you have it, because I haven't seen them. But to me, they kind of come off as dare movies. They come off as the kind of movies that when you're in high school, you dare your friends to watch because that's how crazy they supposedly are. Movies like Faces of Death and Cannibal Holocaust and Human Centipede. Jodorowsky's movies look like they fit within that genre, with the caveat that he was a highly esteemed director. So... Take everything I just said for what it's worth. And you get to see Jodorowsky speak in this documentary. The director conducted multiple interviews with him when he was 84 years old. And the funny thing is that as edgy and aggressive as Jodorowsky's movies might have been, when he speaks in this, he comes off as the calmest, sweetest, most charming person ever outside of one turn of phrase that he uses where I was like, eh, I wish he wouldn't have said that. Like, he's so friendly and nice in this that when you listen to him, you'd never think that this gentle old man created movies that were so controversial that they caused riots when they were first released. But yes, the fact that Jodorowsky was going to direct Dune is pretty incredible, and barring delays, it would have come out in the mid-1970s, and it would have come out before Star Wars. And you'd have thought that Jodorowsky had wanted to direct Dune because he had read the book and fell in love with it and wanted to bring it to life. And yet, no, because in the documentary, he says that he hadn't read Dune before and that he wasn't that interested in honoring Frank Herbert's vision and that he was just going to take it in a completely different direction. He even says at the beginning of the documentary that he wanted his version of Dune to simulate what it's like to take LSD, and that he wanted his movie to feel like an LSD-induced hallucination. Which again is amazing. It's incredible that he was even allowed to pursue making a film adaptation of Dune in his vision in the first place. One of the reasons why people are still fascinated in Jodorowsky's plan for Dune is that he managed to assemble a dream team around it. It was going to have H.R. Giger, the designer of Alien, designing it. It was going to have Dan O'Bannon, the writer of Alien, on it as well. It would have had Mobius doing the art. It was going to have Pink Floyd doing the music. It was going to have David Carradine as Duke Leto. It was going to have Salvador Dali, the painter, playing the Emperor. It was going to have Gloria Swanson in it. It was going to have Mick Jagger in it. 
it was gonna have Orson Welles play the Baron in the movie, which I found mind-blowing because they show concept art of what the Baron was supposed to look like in this movie, presumably as he was flying around, and it's like, wow, you were gonna have Orson Welles doing that? That's something. And for most of the documentary, you get to hear Jodorowsky recount how he managed to convince these very famous eclectic celebrities to sign on to his project. I love, too, that when you listen to Jodorowsky, you can tell that he really did care about this movie. At first, when I started watching this, I was suspicious of him. I was wondering if maybe he was just making these crazy movies for the sake of being a provocateur, and that he was just trying to shock people for the sake of shocking people. But no, you can tell from watching this that he really did have the spirit of an artist in him. He really believed in what he was making. In other words, there was a method to his madness. And that madness might not have necessarily been up my alley, or perhaps yours, but I still wound up respecting him way more than I anticipated. The best thing about this documentary is that you get to see the visuals for the project. Jodorowsky's version of Dune was never filmed. It was shut down before there was any shooting. However, the producers of it had decided that the way they were going to sell this movie to Hollywood studios was by presenting an art book of it. So they had the entire film storyboarded, and they included all of this wonderful concept art, and they packaged it together in this gigantic hardcover Bible, and there are only a few original copies of this book in existence. But you get to see some of the storyboards that are inside them, and in a couple instances, you get to see them animated. For instance, the opening shot of Jodorowsky's Dune was going to be this very long shot that spanned the entire universe. And in the documentary, you actually get to see that sequence animated, as conveyed through those black and white storyboards, which was a really cool effect. I thought it was awesome that the documentary did that. And if anything, I thought there should have been more stuff like that featured in it. Which kind of leads me into where I think this documentary falters. Most of this documentary is about the setup of Jodorowsky's movie, but there's relatively little focus on why his movie never happened, on why it was cancelled. When the documentary finally gets around to discussing it, Jodorowsky and his producer just say that Hollywood was afraid of him, and that's really all we get, because there is no narrator in this documentary. It relies entirely on people's testimonials. This documentary puts out the narrative that Jodorowsky was a genius, who was making something groundbreaking, and that the reason his Dune wasn't allowed to be made was because the gatekeepers of Hollywood didn't understand him and didn't respect his brilliance. And I found that narrative insufficient for two reasons. One, this documentary was made about 35 years after Jodorowsky's movie had gotten cancelled, so it should have been possible to include at least one voice from one of the studios who could have explained from their angle why they balked at Jodorowsky's film. There are interviews in this documentary with people like H.R. Giger and Chris Foss who worked on the film, but we don't hear from anybody outside the movie who was involved in its demise, which to me was necessary. Documentaries don't necessarily need to be neutral, but they should be fair. And so, when there isn't an explanation presented from the other side, the argument that's presented to us feels flimsy. Like, there are these younger directors and critics in the documentary who admire Jodorowsky, and they all sign on to the idea that, oh yeah, for sure, Hollywood was afraid of him, and that's why they wouldn't accept his version of Dune. But that comes off as a presumption more than anything, because how do they know? They're just repeating what they've heard. They're not actually authorities on any of this. They're only there to praise Jodorowsky. And the other reason why I can't get on board with that narrative 
is that this documentary is, to put it mildly, not as comprehensive as it should be. I was reading up on this documentary after I watched it when I came upon an interview that the director, Frank Pavich, gave to IndieWire.com in 2014. And in the interview, he was asked if there were any good anecdotes that he had uncovered about Jodorowsky's Dune that didn't make it into his documentary. And he proceeded to share one about Charlotte Rampling, who tried out for the movie and who later appeared in the 2021 version of Dune as the Reverend Mother, that I found astounding. Quote, and brace yourself because this gets gross, Jodorowsky was going to shoot part of the film in Algeria. They spoke to the Algerian government and the Algerian army was going to play extras. They sent Charlotte Rampling the script and she agreed to meet with Jodo before she had read the script. And in the script, there is a scene with a character named Rabin the Beast, part of the Harkonnen army. In order to insult Duke Leto, David Carradine, Rabin the Beast gets his army, the Algerian army, to pull down their pants in front of the palace and shit. So there's going to be a scene of 2,000 extras defecating at once. So here's Charlotte Rampling. She agrees to meet with Jodo. She gets the script. She reads the script. And she says, I can't be in a movie where there's 2,000 extras defecating on screen. I need to be in a movie that people are actually going to see. Who the hell is going to see this movie? Now, I am not exaggerating when I say that that is the most interesting anecdote that I have ever read about any movie ever. And when I read that, my immediate thought was, how the hell do you make a 90-minute documentary about a movie that would have had a scene in it in which 2,000 members of the Algerian army are defecating at the same time on screen and not mention it? How? And as it turns out, that is not the only jarring tidbit about Jodorowsky's movie that is left out of the documentary. Here's another one, which, warning, is in the same vein as the last one. According to Jodorowsky himself, when he was meeting with Salvador Dali to get him to play the Emperor, one of Dali's conditions was that the Emperor's throne needed to be a toilet. A toilet comprised of two intersecting dolphins in which pee would be flushed through the mouth of one dolphin and poop would be flushed through the mouth of the other dolphin. And in the movie, you would actually get to see Dolly's character use the toilet, although it was going to be a body double of Dolly. Again, that anecdote, that incredibly interesting anecdote that you will probably remember long after you've watched this video, is not featured in the documentary. Nor is it noted, strangely, that Jodorowsky wound up firing Dolly from the project because Dolly had made political statements that Jodorowsky had found objectionable. That, too, is something that should have been brought up if you're going to spend all this time mentioning how you got him in the movie in the first place. Here's one more. H.R. Giger did a bunch of illustrations and designs for Dune, even though the movie was never made. See this incredible drawing that he made of one of the sandworms that were supposed to be in Jodorowsky's movie? This drawing does not appear in the documentary. And while you do get to see some of the other illustrations and some of the sketches that he made, the descriptions that he gave for those are conspicuously absent. Take, for instance, the one that he gave for these sketches, which are all part of the Harkonnen's castle. In Giger's own words, quote, Opposite the entrance is the ejector system. Here, from time to time, but particularly during attacks, gigantic quantities of charred bones and shit are hurled into the surrounding area, accompanied by thunder and fire. So, you see, Jodorowsky's movie was going to have a lot of human waste in it. And for the documentary 
to not note any of that, which it doesn't, feels very intentional to me. Another relevant detail that's not in the documentary that should have been is that there were reports that Jodorowsky's movie was so ambitious and so extravagant that had it been made exactly as he wanted it to be, it would have been between 10 and 14 hours long, which is a critical piece of information to keep from the audience. In the documentary, you hear a couple people very briefly say that there were fears that the movie was going to be long, but to not have anyone mention what its reported length was and that it was that long is inexcusable to me, especially since, again, it's a very interesting piece of information. I got the impression from watching this documentary that the director of it purposefully sidelined a lot of the crazy outlandish details about Jodorowsky's Dune in order to really make it feel like a tragedy that it never came to be. We're supposed to leave this documentary believing that Jodorowsky was making something amazing and that he was done in by charlatans who didn't appreciate art. But when you consider that his Dune was going to be like a 14-hour film with all of these very grotesque scatological moments in it, it becomes rather understandable why a Hollywood film studio in the 1970s might have questioned if people would actually go out and see this. In fact, it becomes believable that Jodorowsky's version of Dune, for all its curiosities, might, just might, not have actually been that great. And this documentary, in my opinion, was afraid to broach that. And so, a lot of these extremely outlandish details about the movie, like how expensive it was reportedly going to be, are hidden from the audience. And most of the documentary is about how it was assembled as opposed to what's in it. I found it notable that for all the material at this documentary's disposal, we hardly learn anything about what the story in Jodorowsky's Dune really was. We see the beginning and we see the end, but we don't actually get a synopsis highlighting all the ways that Jodorowsky's version of Dune was going to be different from Frank Herbert's. And again, it gives the impression, to me anyway, that the director of this documentary didn't want us to see everything that was in it. Because you have to wonder, what else was in this movie? It's almost like the director looked at the storyboards for this movie, and looked at the script, and went, okay, some of this is so out there, that if I show enough of these, people are going to see things that they think are crazy. And if that happens, they might not think the movie was going to be great anymore, and it might ruin the mystique about it. And if that's the case, it's not just a disservice to the audience, it's dishonest about who Alejandro Jodorowsky really was. If you really admire Jodorowsky, you should admire the totality of him, and not some sanitized version of him. The people who watch this documentary deserve to know that Jodorowsky's Dune was going to be fucking crazy. Because two things can be true. It can both suck that his Dune wasn't made, and it can be very, very plausible that his Dune might have been really hard to sit through at times. All of which is to say that as interesting as the subject matter is, and it is interesting, this documentary was rather disappointing to me. Jodorowsky's Dune was one of the best-rated movies of 2013. It got almost universal acclaim, and yet it just wasn't that impressive to me. In fact, Jodorowsky's Dune doesn't even feel like a documentary at times, because 70% of it is just listening to Jodorowsky speak in an interview that's occasionally interspersed with B-roll. What saves it, though, is that Jodorowsky 
is very charismatic in this, and he is easy to listen to. At the very end of the documentary, too, he gives this speech where he encourages people to just put themselves out there and create things. Be ambitious, it doesn't matter if you fail, just try. And it's just the most beautiful speech. And it's perfect because it totally applies to him. Joe Dorowski may not have been able to bring his version of Dune to fruition, but the people who worked on the visuals for it wound up creating Alien just a couple years later. And that movie almost certainly never would have been made had they not collaborated on Dune. And Alien is one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time, and one of my favorite movies of all time. And it just goes to show how even from a huge failure can come something great. And that's why it's good to put yourself out there, even at the risk of failure, because you never know what'll happen. As for this documentary, however, I didn't think it was that well made. I found its research to be lacking, and to the degree that it perpetuates the myth that Jodorowsky's version of Dune was unquestionably going to be this masterpiece, which it does by not showing the audience things that would contradict that, is, again, disappointing. In general, this documentary needed to show more stuff. More interviews, more storyboards, more concept art, more anecdotes, more information about how and why this thing unraveled, etc. And it could have. If this wasn't such a Jodorowsky puff piece, if it was more objective, it could have gone deeper on this and it would have been so much better for it. I wouldn't have left this feeling like I'd only gotten a portion of the truth. But, having said that, what's there is entertaining. And if nothing else, those animated sequences are really cool to look at. So, overall, I give Jodorowsky's Dune, the 2013 documentary, a 7.29 out of 10, which is to say that it's okay. It's bolstered by the fact that its subject is fascinating, and you might be glad you watched it for that reason, if you watch it. But let's just say it should have had more meat on its bones. Thank you.